It's time for the Spoonie One Wrestling Show. It's time for the Spoonie One Wrestling Show. Hey, didn't expect to see us back here together. Uh, this is uh, this is Miles, of course, my brother. He is in town for Bee Fest, uh, the the Honey Festival that takes place in Illinois every year. Uh, it's also a 24-hour film festival, but we decided we catch the Royal Rumble. We were going to see it with some friends. Unfortunately, it is like the worst winter in about 15 plus years here, so we are basically snowed in. But we thought we'd order it anyway and uh, give you our thoughts briefly. I, I, every time I say that, I ramble on for an hour, but I don't think there's really much to say about this one. I mean... Go ahead, like, <laughs> it's it's kind of remarkable how y you expect more out of them at this point. You know what I mean? Um, you'd think, it, you'd think they'd be able to read an audience that is all but firing, like, all but hiring skywriters, <laughs> you know, to... They're telling you what they want, you know. Yeah. And, and this, all right. This is kind of what I'm saying. And let's never mind the fact that you're having tag team championship changes on the pre-show. You're changing the tag team championships on the YouTube match. You're changing the the championships on a match nobody's watching. You know. Never mind the fact that the tag team titles are so worthless now, you might as well kick the belts in a fucking sewer. Never mind the fact that every time the tag team champions come out, my reaction is, oh, they're, uh, they have, they're the champs? Seriously, that's my reaction every time. It, like, if, if next week you were to quiz me, if you were to ask me direct, like, who's the tag team champions? Either, if, if I remembered at all, it would take me a full, like, minute to remember. I'd be like... <sighs> you know, I, I'd sit there, and it's not because I have a bad memory. It's because I, I don't think many people will remember, you know. Well, the tag team division's gotten better, which is the sad part. Yes, yeah. that continually they've had the best matches on Raw. They've had the best matches on, on some pay-per-views, at least recently. And so... Especially on a card that was so small mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and was, and after seeing it all, was lacking in stuff to really get people into it. Mm -hmm. To not have it on the main show, mm -hmm. and I realize they're not the main draws, but mm -hmm. still, they're the they're the things that get people into the the match. To I mean, to not have them on the show, and you could have anyone on that freaking pre match show. I mean, really, you have the U.S. And or the Intercontinental Champion, and you're doing nothing with them. Yeah. Granted, they show up later, but then again, you had people showing up later in, in the Royal Rumble anyway that were wrestling in other matches. Yeah, somehow you've got... Somehow, I, I still don't know how this, is, how this works, but like, Goldust and Cody Rhodes are good. They're really good. They've been consistently putting on the best... Like, somehow they've been putting on great tag team matches, like, you know, some people were talking, like, match of the year candidate level matches between The Shield and Co Goldust and Cody Rhodes. They weren't match of the year, but, like, they were seriously, like, for the WWE, the best matches of the year. You know, for the WWE. Um, and they're getting, not only they're getting, like, uh, these are a lot of not only stipulations I'm putting on, but these are all true. You know, not only are, for the WWE, like, some of the best performers, performers right now, they're getting pushed to the pre-show. But, you know, we're, we're talking about a division that is worthless. We're talking about, it's still worthless, despite it being probably the best state has been in for a while. Um, th they still have no opponents. You know, Goldust and Cody Rhodes had no opponents beyond the Shield. Think about it. Like, nobody really. They have the Usos, but they can't, they can't feud with baby faces, you know, like... So, let me, this is my, this is what I'm getting to. Your tag team champions now, in 2000, 
14 are the New Age Outlaws. Yeah. You didn't know? No, I know. I know. And I want to call somebody. I want to call the retirement home that they escaped from. It reminds me, and this is not a good thing, it reminds me of TNA when, I think it was 2012, when the Outsiders were the World Tag Team Champions. When Scott Hall and Kevin Nash were TNA Tag Team Champions. Scott Hall, when Hall ruled, <laughs> Hall, Hall ruled. Hall did not rule. Now, Road Dog and Billy Gunn are not anywhere near as bad as Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were. Not saying that. What I'm saying is, look at look at the main event picture right now. The tag team champions in 2014 are the New Age Outlaws. The current guys who are main eventing are John Cena and Randy Orton. The guy who won the Royal Rumble, spoilers. The guy who won the Royal Rumble, Dave Batista. What's changed? You wonder why. I mean, it used to be people didn't care. You know, people used to wonder why you were losing an audience. Now, it's kind of circled back around to where not only... It, it used to be they were angry. Then it, used to, then it went to them not caring. Now, it's you've seen it kind of turn a point where they've gone beyond not caring to the point where it's kind of... Would you just fucking go away? You know, it's like... It's just like this this noise, you know, and you're like, you're like, if you ignore it, they go away, and then you're like, you stop caring, and then, you know, like, it's next year, and you're like, you're still doing this? I get the feeling that uh, Vince McMahon should be eternally grateful to Vince Russo and Eric Bischoff, because it was their dumb fuckery which made the Monday Night War at all significant. If, if they just stood by and did nothing, and just let Vince McMahon run his own show, it would be Hulk Hogan for WrestleMania 16 main eventing against yeah. wh whoever, and that, you know, it'd be, nothing would change, you'd still have the same old people doing the same old shtick, yeah, yeah. and no one getting elevated, and it was, it was through the forcing of their hand that Vince was like, ah, to push some other people. Yeah, and that's the, thing. <laughs> that's the thing is like, it's just stagnant, and that was no no better illustrated than the matches that came like back to back here. This show started. It started with the tag team championship match that nobody saw, but it really started with Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan, and which was the match of the night. And I didn't expect it to be very good because, let's face it, Bray, Bray Wyatt is is probably not very good. He's okay. He, he's okay. I certainly didn't expect him to be very good. Like in I don't know how long they went. Fifteen minutes? Ten? Let's say let's let's be let's say twelve minutes. I didn't time it. But you know, twelve minutes, twelve fifteen minutes. They went a while. Um, I certainly didn't expect him to be able to, to go 15 minutes, or anywhere near about. But Daniel Bryan not only carried him, he took him to a really good match. And that's not me fanboying over Daniel Bryan. Um, I'm, a, I'm something of a fan. But no, he carried him to a really good match. Um, I was really impressed. To You know, there was a lot of good kind of psychology there. Um... So let's just you know that was that was the that was the high water mark of the show, you know those were these were two got new guys to the show, they got a chance to show off, and it was a new story, and the crowd wanted to see something new when they got it. 
cut to the next match, uh, which was John Cena and Randy. Oh, Orton. it was Big Show and and uh. Well, okay. Let me let me fast forward a bit. Let's go to the let's go to John Cena. Let, this is I'm making a point. <laughs> Contrast. John Cena and Randy Orton, or as I like to call it. <laughs> You may recall, and I, I feel the need to bring this up, because we're not supposed to remember this. Many, many moons ago... I remembered it before you. <laughs> I was the one bitching about this <laughs> when they first came up with it, when the, the title unification match... No, I was, remembered it immediately. I bitching about it. <laughs> I remembered it immediately, but they had a match with the exact stipulation that they would never wrestle again, specifically because... They had wrestled approximately three zillion goddamn times, and we'd fucking seen it. Like, there was nothing, like, we were so bored of that match, and they were conscious that we were so bored of that goddamn match. Like, it had main evented, like, eight of the last twelve pay-per-views, and the feud would not die. So, like, it was seriously, like, the the tagline of that pay-per-view, like, the last time, we swear to God. And this this was the pay-per-view, I keep bringing this up, with uh, with where, like, Randy Orton tried to murder John Cena with explosives. And there's, like, a really, like, it, people don't remember this, like, really. Where, like, he, he, he like, RK, he beat up John Cena on the stage, and then Randy's psychotic, and he's, like, mashing his hand on the pyro control panel, and, like, John Cena only barely escapes the explosions. And I'm like, holy shit, like, what are we witnessing here? We're, t- we're witnessing attempted murder, which, Ra- <laughs> which Randy, like, escaped. Like, no charges, by the way. But this feud, I-, I don't know why this couldn't just be about the title. No, we had to make it personal. By having Randy Orton snap and punch... John Cena's dad in the face. Again. This is like the third time it's happened. How much more personal do you need? (laughs) John Cena's dad. Seriously, this is the third time he's been assaulted by Randy Orton. Like, John Cena Sr. needs to have, like, a private security detail assigned to him. John Cena stops need to buy, needs to stop buying his dad tickets no, fuck. just don't have him in the front row. Buy yeah, like, him, like, even five rows back. Get him a skybox. But, well, when God's he's like, sake, John, you can afford it. Oh, well, and he's like, hey, Randy. <laughs> John, I'm in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, again. Even, you... even if Randy takes a flying leap, he can't get back six rows. Uh, that... No, <laughs> you know. You know. Like... You know they point out, like, John Cena Sr. They're like, and John Cena's dad is up in this private skybox behind uh, behind you, four inches of Lexan bulletproof glass. He's in the Pope's private... You, do, you don't want... The, is it, you, you don't want... You don't want the front row, and you don't want the box. Because that's, A, private, and B, at some point, he's going to get defenestrated out of that. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, because what but they'll do... What you, they'll, you'll, you want is the, the sweet spot, the middle... <laughs> no, because what they do in the private box is, like, John Cena would be in the ring waiting for the match, and his music would hit, but he doesn't come out. John's like, what the, what's up, what's up? And then they'd cut to a camera in the private box, and then, like, the butler would be like... <laughs> and then it'd be like, I'm up here, John, with a chair. And then, like, like hits his dad, and then, like, oh, my God, we can't get in. And he's like, I got it. And he throws his dad. You know, yeah, I can see where it's going. Like, stop, Dad, stop sending your dad to Raw. Jesus Christ, man. But, like, we're, I guess we're just not supposed to remember, like, or, or we're clearly catering to, like, six-year-olds. You know, kids who obviously cannot remember. Like, yeah. I, I <laughs> it, everyone has their things in wrestling that tick them off, and, and I think I have two mm-hmm. that... And it's it's the strangest thing. I was texting a friend. He's also a wrestling friend. I I bitched about a certain thing, and he goes, "Well, it was for this." And I go, "Look, 
You're skipping I, ahead. Though. I know this is fantasy, and I know this is all bullshit, but God damn it, there's got to be fairness. You're skipping ahead on but, this. But okay, that's ahead. one of those things. The other one is, is history. Just let history be history. I bring this up because it, it happened most prominently when Triple H fought Undertaker for the second and third time. Where? When he's going like... We're, when, when we're bringing it, up ghosts. I am. <laughs> but like HBK would be going like, you've never faced him before, H. You can't beat him. You can't beat him. <laughs> and so he's like, oh, I can't. I could do it. And every time, ring. every time I'd be like, motherfucker, you guys wrestled before. At WrestleMania, you wrestled. You guys Acknowledge slammed it. off the scaffold thing. <laughs> Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Yeah, because they've already wrestled twice. He's like, I could do it this time. In the ring. You know? It, like, yeah, they had a WrestleMania match already, and then they fought again, and then they fought again. Seriously, like, you, he gets, like, three matches. But, yeah, they never, they never once acknowledged... You, they, you could before. pull whatever screw job you want. You could have whatever run-ins you want. I don't care. But at least be honest about it. <laughs> now, what bothered me way worse is the fact that they, when they were unifying the titles, they never one time acknowledged that Chris Jericho was the first man to unify the titles and be the first ever undisputed WWE champion. Leads into the other one. <laughs> this is history, people. Never now, happened before. Now I no no no, no. Well, I, don't, I don't think they said it never happened before, but they never acknowledge it. And I know why they didn't. Well, they're saying history would be made, but even then, history wasn't made. Okay, it's been done before. No, but I know why they didn't, because it makes the match far less like significant. You know, because like oh well, if it's happened before, well we don't need to see. You know what I mean? Be like if, if during the Super Bowl, they're just like the Denver Broncos have never won the Super Bowl. <laughs> This is but history you, in the making. But you know what I mean. Like, if, if they say, like... Because they were pushing it. They, they were literally saying, like, This is the most important match in WWE history. We're going to unify the titles. And I'm like, that's happened. But they never bring up, like... I'm like, fucking Jericho did that, you know? like Peyton Manning's never won a Super Bowl. <laughs> Cheer him on this one. Yeah, and be like... It'd be like saying, "Can he win it this time?" It'd be like the two best teams in the NFL are going to to play a game and decide who the best team is. And I'm like, "Oh my god, that's going to be huge! We should see that." You know, that was unbelievable. Um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of things on this show that were that have happened before that were never brought up. For instance, uh, another one. You mentioned Brock and Big Show. Uh, it, it's actually somewhat interesting that um, that Brock w uh, Brock was fighting Big Show. However, um, uh, uh, Paul Heyman originally went turned against Brock Lesnar to manage the Big Show when he went to the revamped ECW. Remember that. You'd think that would be something Big Show might raise a concern about to kind of get inside Brock's head. They're like, hey, Brock, yeah, you remember you remember when that one time Paul Heyman, like, turned against you and managed me when I went to ECW and won the ECW Heavyweight Championship? That was funny, wasn't it? You remember that? <laughs> but even then, that was I'm, nutty. Like, I'm not someone that would would be for obscure trivia and just be like... That's not obscure! No, he won the what, world championship because of that. That's what I'm saying. I'm not someone who'd be like... If, if someone mentioned a tag team and be like, oh, these guys, they'd, never, they'd be like, well, actually, on an episode of Superstars in 2003, well, they actually it, it, did this. It was the ECW championship. <clears> so. But when you're bringing up WrestleMania moments and world title... Like, history making world title changes. Yeah, I'm going to remember that. <laughs> the undisputed ch championship. That was huge. And d that people remember that. Yeah. <laughs> people. Like, okay, the ECW championship. That was that was the WWE C Fuck's sake. People blocked that. You know, even people who watched wrestling, when I was doing the WrestleMania board game review, and I showed people the clip of the zombie, 
people I know who watched wrestling would e- were emailing me and was like, was that real? Like, they, they were like they were emailing me were like, what did you do that? Was that real? Like they were they were asking me if I faked that like. <laughs> They're like, how did you? What I don't. What, what they, they they were like in disbelief. They were like, was it was that a, was that a sketch or was I don't even what? How did that looked real? And I'm like, that was Vince McMahon's greatest revenge. Yeah, he like <laughs> he like systematically bent ECW over and just like publicly butt fucked it for like a year and a half. He, and, he paid money to butt fuck it for a year and a half, and, and he just and he was like. This is so worth it! Kevin Thorne! (laughs) Ah! Mordecai! Well, I was on SmackDown, but you know what I mean. (laughs) Pirate Paul Burchill! December to dismember! (laughs) This is costing me so much money, but it's worth it! (laughs) Not even the wrestler's parents watched December to dismember. I'm convinced that... The people who drove to that show were like, were, were just drove like thought they were going to SmackDown. You know, they're like, "What day is it? I don't know, man." I, I th- oh, there's the show going on. Today. Let's go. Oh shit. Oh no. Who's in the cage? Fuck. This is an ECW show. What this fuck is Big Show doing in there? Ezekiel Jackson. Who the fuck? Where's Tommy Dreamer and Rob Van? He got pinned. Oh fuck, man. No. Supposed to be talking about the Royal Rumble. <laughs> Even though those, show, those shows were like at least memorable. Anyway, the fuck was I? Oh, John Cena. You. Oh, I forgot where I was. I was talking about John Cena and Randy Orton match three thousand seven hundred and sixty-two, or was it sixty-three? I don't know. They all fucking blur together at this point. Can you blame me? What's funny is they, you obviously need a new gimmick every single time they wrestle. Or try no, you to, don't. Or no, you try don't. to. Or try to. No, they don't. <laughs> they, they try to, and, and, and this is just like they, they try to, like with the last one it was, oh, we know we said we weren't going to do it before, but this is for title unification, and this is, uh, and in this one. Yeah, you're right. They actually did <laughs> admit that. They did. Because like, this is special. And this one. They tried to have, like, the end-all, be-all WrestleMania blow-off match because they were doing everything from kicking out of each other's finishers to doing each other's finishers and kicking out of that. Can I... Can, uh, well, here's something that I found hilarious. When they did the unification match, and they put both belts above the ring, you know, they were like, okay... The, well, the first thing is they had screwed over Daniel Bryan so many times, like... Like, three times over the course of three months. People were so disillusioned that I was like, there's no way they're going to trust anything that they do from now on. Because, like, there's three times. Like, who would ever buy a pay-per-view again? Like, you're going to... You I didn't. I, I've, I've chipped into pay-per-views, and I, I don't do this because I don't normally buy pay-per-views, but I was... Chipping in with friends to buy the Daniel Bryan pay per views. Yeah, and then when it came around to title unification, you wouldn't do it. I didn't do it because I didn't even trust that they would unify the titles. But and that's why in that <laughs> one match was they were like, I think they knew they were in deep shit after that last one because like they, it was just a blatant screw job. Because they kept that it was the second time he'd won, pardon me, and then the next night they just took it away. You know, it was the dusty finish all over again. And so they were like, they had to come out there and be like, we guarantee a definitive match. There will be one winner and one champion walking out. And But even then, I don't think you, didn't, didn't, believe you didn't believe it. <laughs> and why would you? So, like, but there, they, they, there was. Um, but th- that's, they had to come right out and be like, okay, seriously. Like, I know we've been assholes. You know, so like, but okay, so they have that match, Randy Orton wins clean, essentially, which, remarkable, really, but then they're like, okay, John Cena gets his rematch, but then Triple H goes backstage, and he's like, okay, they're gonna have a match for the title in the ring, but it's gonna be, but it's gonna be 
a wrestling match. <laughs> and I'm like, he's never done that before. No, but he's like, he's like, <laughs> but it's going to be a wrestling match where you have to win with a pin fob. I would have been more interesting in a chess match. That would have more drama in it. Thank and you. I would be genuinely interested in seeing who was the best. We'd have, we wouldn't have seen it before. But no, my point is, the next thing he says is like, we're going to have a straight up wrestling match. And he goes, <clears throat> we're finally going to find out who the man is. And I'm like, we didn't fucking find out who the last, the last fucking time they wrestled was. Like, there was no interference. And the, the the whole point of fucking match was they guarantee they 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 specifically said there's gonna be no interference. They said this there was gonna be no interference. I would. They said. They said. There's gonna be no interference. Okay, wait. <laughs> they said there's gonna be no interference. They can say this. Remember, okay, management can say there's going to be no interference. Why can't they say there's going to be no interference in every match? Isn't that wrong? <laughs> isn't, isn't interference in a match bad? <laughs> like, like, can't they be like, okay, guys, from now on, there's going to be no interference. You're serious now. Seriously. <laughs> Come on. Stop it. <laughs> no, but no, 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 no. They go like, okay, in this match, there's going to be no interference. So that didn't happen <laughs> because Triple H said. So there wasn't. But is it a, oh, the only way you're going to win is climb a ladder and pull the fucking belts down. So that happened. I thought we figured out who the man was. No, we're going to have a wrestling match. Boom. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. So, ah. Oh. So that's what led us here. We found out who the man was. Until the next time. Well, they're going to they're gonna do it again. But, like, even this one, like I said, they tried to pull out all the stops and have it be the WrestleMania blow-off. Yeah. They, they trade each other's finishers. They do each other's finishers. They yeah. kick out of it. Problem is, we've even seen that before. We've, they've done it. They've done it at WrestleMania. <clears throat> so, even, like, oh my god. They didn't care. They did the FU. They, they lost them way before that. <laughs> they, they lost them. True. Before. True. I'm just saying, even by their own logic of oh. doing a different gimmick it didn't work but yeah within 20 seconds they're chanting this before is that. boring before that they well they weren't chanting this is boring they were chanting everything else but because even this is they're chanting this is boring at that match they're like that chant is boring <laughs> but haven't we chanted randy savage you know like because they even like seriously like even like they're like they had lost interest in chanting at some point like Early on, they didn't even want to chant. You could tell, because all of a sudden, the camera angle started getting crazy. You notice the editing was getting all over the place, and I'm starting to like, why are they, why are they cutting like all weird all of a sudden? And I realized the crowd wasn't looking at the match. All their heads were turned. And I realized the sound was moving, like the crowd. They're doing the wave. And the wave is the worst thing that can happen for the crowd, for the for the wrestlers in a match, you know, for, from the audience. Because what the wave means is they don't even care enough about the match to chant. They don't even care about enough about the match to watch. They're doing the wave, which means they're not watching the match. They're waiting to see when the wave comes their way, and then they're watching the wave go back go by because the wave is cool. They don't give a fuck about what's happening in, in the ring. That's what was going on. So for the first, like, three minutes, yeah, they're so fucking pissed off that they're seeing Randy Orton and John Cena again. Yeah. They're going, same old shit. Boring. What were they? Randy Savage. This is awful. This, this is awful. You both suck. Yeah. 
At one point, they said, we want divas. Uh, they didn't even bother chanting for the commentators. No. They didn't, they didn't bother doing the Fandango dance. Which surprised me. I thought they would start doing the Fandango. And they weren't, like, for the longest time, they weren't commenting. And I mentioned, normally when it's the Canadian crowd or, yeah, or some other crowd, they, they can go... Oh, it's Bizarro World. They're, they, they're, they're saying that Cena sucks, but this one, it, they were they, taken aback. Early it. on, early on, before it got really <laughs> hostile, they'd be like, Cena feeds on these emotions. He just loves when a crowd is involved. Because one of the very first ones was the... Just Cena sucks. Let's go Cena, Cena sucks, that one. And so then they, they were kind of doing, like, oh, he feeds off the controversy. But yeah. then when it full-on shit on yeah, the match... After a minute, that just turned... Because then they started wrestling. This is before he actually started wrestling. Once the bell rung, they were just like, oh. <laughs> you know, because it immediately turned into chin locks and and shoulder blocks. You know, they they just and immediately they were like, okay, here's 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 why. Here's why the match sucked. All right, let's say. Let's say you're Randy Orton, and I'm John Cena. Just bear with me. You hit my dad in the face, and you hit him so hard you broke his orbital bone. You put him in the hospital. And then we're going to have a wrestling match. I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm going to hit you so goddamn hard, the ref is going to have to pull me off of you because my fist is going to be covered in your gore. Does John Cena fight Randy Orton like he's going to fucking kill you? No. He starts locking, he just starts doing this. He starts doing shoulder blocks. He starts throwing suplexes. He starts doing his little fisherman slam. He starts doing this. Brock Lesnar got way more pissed off at so much less. Brock Lesnar, on the other hand, <laughs> over nothing. Brock Lesnar over it, a completely in your head slight that that Big yeah. Show was embarrassing him. Yeah, Brock Lesnar felt insulted. He got shoved. He got pushed down, and his takedown got stuffed. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Big Show stuffed his takedown, and Brock was like, "No way, you live." His his father could have been murdered, and I don't think he would have had that much more of a reaction than his takedown being stuffed. He might have actually kind of respected that. Yeah, he's like, "You got balls," but no, like Big Show kind of like stuffed his takedown, and he's like, well, "You stuff my takedown." He's like, "You stuff my oh, you think you're tough? <laughs> oh, you think that? And fuck you!" And like, no, like Brock Lesnar came at him like he was a rabid beast. So like, yeah, he fucking attacked that guy, and he kept wailing on him, and he kept wailing on him, and like five minutes, he beat this guy with a chair. That's what John Cena should have been doing to Randy Orton. He put his dad in the fucking hospital. His dad. Didn't press charges. Specifically because... Specifically so, he would have John Cena whoop his ass for him. Specifically so, John Cena could put this motherfucker in the hospital where he was. That was the point of this match. That's not what happened. This is what I'm saying. If I'm in the ring with Randy Orton, and I'm John Cena, Randy Orton would kill me. But no, if it was me, Randy Orton. But if I'm in, if John Cena was in the ring with Randy Orton, I'm gonna kill you. That's my point. Like, that's like you're not. I'm not locking up with you. I'm not putting you in a chin lock. I'm gonna tear your face off, and I'm gonna make you eat it. You put my dad in the hospital. You broke his fucking orbital bone. But of course, I'm not. What the fuck? What the fuck is this? 
The whole point of this match is you made it personal. You hurt my dad. This isn't about titles anymore. Like, you're trying to tell a story, and then you immediately fuck it up! Am I crazy here? <laughs> if you're not gonna tell that story, don't fucking tell- don't start that story! And they've done this three times! And they've never followed through on it any of those times! Because they don't want to do this to John Cena. They don't want to give John Cena any kind of edge. They don't want to scare the children off. They don't want to turn John Cena into the crazy guy. They don't want to turn him into Martin Riggs. They don't want to turn him into the I'm gonna fucking kill you kind of guy. They don't want to turn him into the crazy spoony guy. He's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. They don't like you know. It kind of got scary any there for a second. Like you know, I'm not in intimidating, but they don't want to give him that crazy guy's look. You know, they don't want to do that because he's selling goofy, shitty T-shirts. We obviously hit on the head. It's it's just about seeing him, seeing them again, and again, and again. Not look. This has nothing to do with John Cena hate overall. No, it's I, not. I have no. I I have no problem. When he wrestles other people, I'm perfectly fine. When he's doing his matches with and not to eat, but Daniel Bryan or or other people or if CM Punk, it's fine. My problem is that I've seen this match. So many times. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, so like done with this. So like, if you're gonna do this match again, do something different. And I'm like, I, w I gave this match a chance. Because like, okay, they're making it personal. Maybe they will do this. Maybe they will have a fight. They won't have a match. And they had the same goddamn match they've always had. And the crowd... I think maybe the crowd would have given it a chance if they had a fight. And they had the as soon as they locked up and started doing fucking and they actually you could tell when Randy Orton put in that fucking chin lock. You heard it. He put he put in the fucking chin lock and I heard them go, Ugh I swear to God, I, I I we have it frozen. I think if I went over there and I started that match again, and as soon as the chin lock goes on, he's like Bleh. You'll hear him go, ah. Oh. Well, that was also a fuck you, too. Yeah. I know, like, later on in the match, you can tell when Randy gets pissed off at the crowd when they start doing shit. And that at a certain point, that was like a fuck you, too. Yeah. Chin lock. He, the the, the <laughs> chin lock is a fuck you. It is. But, yeah. I'm like, so, oh. like, stop having matches. God damn it, man. Like, you gotta put some emotion into this, and like... I think they're doing it again for the Elimination Chamber. Yeah, yeah, oh, well, they're going to, because nothing was nothing was settled here. They had this, they had this god-awful, god-awful long match. And I hate when they do that. I hate when they do this thing where they have an, a god-awful long, their WrestleMania formula match, and none of it matters, because it all just ends with a bullshit run-in an RKO and a one two three, you know, they it, this match could have been two minutes long because it doesn't matter. It all ends with you know Bray Wyatt jumping on the apron, RKO and it's over. You know, they, this could have been two minutes long, and it should have been, you know, but like they they did this whole thing where they made it personal, and it turns out it had no more emotion than just kind of a this this could have been. You know, a first match segment on Raw. It felt like one. They, the, and the thing is, they even did that. They, they, the, and this, uh, I think, I think the crowd was lost right away because they knew this was going to be another match because they did a, they did a big fight intro to this. They both came out. They stood in their corners, and they did the announcer did that thing where. Instead of announcing them on the way to the ring, they were standing in their corners and they're, you know, they'd introducing first the challenger, you know, like, and then, you know, and the champion. And I'm like, why is John Cena standing there? He's, he's doing his thing where he's like flexing and he's loosening up and he's, you know, John Cena. And he's like, yeah, me, I'm here smiling. And I'm like, kill this guy. Fucking kill him. 
I'm sorry. This just it 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 really sends me into a rage. Like, there's so many other like, and I'm not going on this thing where like everything in the Attitude Era was better, but like Stone Cold Steve Austin, like this character from the th this character, Stone Cold Steve Austin is not standing in this corner going like. If, like, you hit Stone Cold's dad, I don't know what he'd be doing there, but, like, if you punch Stone Cold's dad, he's, like, he's waiting for you at the entrance to the arena with a fucking pipe, and then he's caving your fucking head in. Like, at that title match, like, you know, the champion comes out to the ring, and he might go to the ring, and then... You know, the announcer get in the middle of the ring. Introducing first the challenge. Ah! And like you know, he turns across the ring and he starts stomping a mud hole in your ass. I'm so I'm done. <laughs> this is the difference, though. And the yeah, the Brock Lesnar thing is a perfect example. Like Brock Lesnar's got a character, and that character is the Hulk. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, a lot of people I don't think liked that match. No. I think a lot of people are shitting on it. I liked it. I liked it. And it wasn't a match. <clears throat> no. But I, li I liked I liked what it was. Um, and and I won't go on about this very long. Uh, I, I thought the Brock Big Show thing was exactly what the Brock Cena thing a long time ago should have been. I thought Brock Cena should have been a one-sided domination of Cena. Like... You know, Brock, Cena, Cena takes Brock way too lightly, and Brock goes in and fucking kills him in three minutes, and takes a chair and and like just kills Cena over the course of like five minutes after the bell and just kills him and kills him and kills him, which leads to Cena, you know, training and making a big comeback and making a huge comeback and challenging him at WrestleMania for the title and overcoming the odds and beating him. And guess what? That's Rocky Three, perfect formula. And it's not because I hate Cena, and that uh, like no, that's that doesn't make Cena look weak. That makes Cena look like a huge overcoming the odds thing. That makes him look stronger than ever. So I was like, I'm helping Cena seriously. Anyway, I I thought that's what Brock Cena should have been. Is like you know Cena gets a flurry of offense in, but he runs into a fucking buzzsaw. He runs into Clubber Lang. You know he just completely underestimates this this beast. And so I think that's kind of what happened to Big Show here. Was like, you know, Big Show, he kind of goes in there kind of expecting a wrestling match. And Brock Lesnar, he ain't here for wrestling. He goes in there to fight. And so he charges in through the ropes and just comes in swinging like an animal. He takes this guy down and he starts raining elbows. You know, and Big Show is not equipped for this kind of hostility, you know. And so, you know, by the time he gets separated, yeah, there's some offense in there, but yeah. Uh, by the way, nobody gave a shit about Big Show. <laughs> this guy's just got a chair, and he's like... Rrr, rrr. He's, just, he's just wailing on this motherfucker for like five minutes. Nobody's coming out to help his big ass. Rey Mysterio is practicing his, his promo before the rumble. He's like, Booyaka! Booyaka, I'll say that. It'll be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he hunt down that racket. I'm trying to think of my promo. Ah, I'm going to win ah, the rumble. Oh, it hurts so much. Oh, uh, Ray. Hey, Ray. Let, let me try that out. Uh, help me. Big Show. Hey, where's Big Show? I'm going to run my promo. Han. <laughs> Leia. <laughs> He actually broke a chair off in his ass. <laughs> and then he, like, summoned another chair with the force. He did. He, like, held his hand out, and another, another chair just, like, appeared. And he's like, hmm. Poof. That was actually kind of sick after a while. It was actually kind of uncomfortable. Um, uh, although that was the point. Um, now, I can see why you wouldn't like it. Because it wasn't a match. And you, I think you said... Uh, wasn't a match, and, and for a... Four match show yeah. that ended up, I think, is less time than a standard Raw. Yeah, you want to have what you you paid for. I agree. So even adding another match would have been yeah preferable. This is a, it's a good story. 
story element you yep. threw in, but it's not what you sold people on. I agree. And, yeah, that, I liked it for what it was, but I, I, this show could have been longer. <laughs> I would have cut <laughs> this the scene that should have been on the YouTube show. <laughs> it would have been booed there too. No, um, yeah, I'd put, I, I would have switched tag team title play, tag team title match for this. Jesus Christ! But yeah, I, I just to repeat, um, I would have booked that entire scene of Brock thing completely differently. But yeah, that's that's. Fantasy booking. I guess I shouldn't go too deep into that. I've been over it too too many times before in my own head. It would have been so much better my way. I'm so much smarter than than everyone else. Um, we were talking about uh, Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt. It was a really good match. Um, I'm a, I heard Daniel Bryan had a concussion a couple weeks ago. I am amazed that he... I heard it was bad, but I guess some people hear a lot of things, so... No, it was, but... How do you come back from a bad... I, if it was a bad concussion, he would still be out. I was kind of surprised they did things like the Sister Abigail on the, on the outside. I don't know about stuff like that, because sometimes that makes me suspicious. Like, if it was a bad concussion, he would still be out. If, he's ba if he was back within a week, it wasn't a bad concussion. Or I don't know much. Of, I'm, obviously, I'm not a doctor. I just play one on the internet. But what's a bad concussion then? Like, you know, like I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm, he, like, a bad concussion to me is like I've like in the NFL, I've seen players go out with concussions for like months, and they're like, "That's bad," <laughs> you know. I I don't know, but yeah. Um, I don't think they've mentioned on TV, or have they, that Daniel Bryan even had a concussion. But, yeah, it was almost like Bray White was working the concussion. Like, for I wasn't it, hearing the announcers calling that, though. No. Although, Dolph Ziggler had a concussion, like, a legit concussion. He was out for, like, over a month. A long time. But So, yeah. Uh, he just got a, He recently got a concussion from the Ryback. Didn't he? I think he did. Anyway... Um, it was a good one, and yeah, he was, Bray Wyatt was, like, targeting the head the whole time. It was a good match, um, very hard-hitting, um, you know, Bray Wyatt obviously kind of works a brawler style, uh, it was obvious Daniel was kind of carrying him, but it was, it was, it was well done, um, uh, the, the big highlights were the t fucking tornado DDT on the outside that looked like it fucking compressed Bray's spine about eight inches, that was brutal. Um, yeah, the the big spot that that was uh, like I think it was Daniel Bryan trying to dive through the middle rope. Bray catches him and does the Sister Abigail like head first into the into the the barricade, which just looked like it fucking murdered him. And then he brought him in and did the. the I'm not calling. It, he did the downward spiral. Um, he downward spiraled him and got clean win. As clean as it gets, because uh, the other, the other, the other Manson clan, the rest of the Manson clan got ejected like immediately. So yeah, he basically won clean without the help of his other boys. So pretty remarkable, really. Um, I think the most notable thing about this entire scenario is, uh, as soon as I say the WWE is completely tone deaf as to what the crowd wants. They kind of listened when it came to their complete rejection of Daniel Bryan joining the Wyatts. Or did they? I don't know. Because, like, they realize, they seemed to realize it was a really stupid idea. You know what I mean? Yeah. They did this, they did this idea where, like, Daniel Bryan um, kept getting screwed out of his titles. <coughs> you know, like, he'd win the title and the next day he would get... You get it pulled away from him. He won it again, and for some reason, he got it pulled away again. So, like, you know, frustration after frustration, and eventually, like, you know, Bray Wyatt is always doing the join me in the dark side thing, and eventually Daniel Bryan is like, I will do whatever you ask, and Bray's like, good. And so, like, he becomes like this, 
he, it's this really weird angle where he becomes this cultist, and he becomes one like immediately. Like he becomes like completely brainwashed. He we- he starts wearing a fucking garbage man jumpsuit, and like he starts just like willingly taking like beatings for his failures and like. It, he looked like an idiot. He started dressing like an idiot, and it just yeah he became he immediately became this Kool Aid drinking cultist guy. And you know I, maybe they just immediately realized this was like so nineties because not again not everything in the nineties was good. You know you had the oddities, you had the headbangers, you know. So you had this really you know the Wyatts are good, but they're good up to a point, and that point is very distinct. And, and Daniel Bryan going from, like, this very talented technical wrestler to dressing like Duke the Dumpster. That's the line. So, like, it, I don't know if they listened to the crowd because the crowd shat on it, like, immediately. I don't know if it was because they are like, it was really obvious he's out of the title picture, or, I don't know. But they, they aborted it, like, immediately. You know? Like, they just had him leave. He's like, no, I'm not here anymore. I'm not doing this. This was, this was all part of my... This is all part of my secret plan. I was going to infiltrate them. Yeah, and... Reveal him as the charlatan that he is. <laughs> Victory! And even Bray Wyatt is like... No, you didn't. And Daniel's like... Did so. I proclaim victory in this feud. And Daniel's like, I did so because I called it. <laughs> and like Bray's like, I'll kick your ass. And she's like, I dare you to? And so yeah, this is what this is where we're at. We're at the Royal Rumble, and they're kicking each other's asses. And I I don't know why. Because Bray Wyatt is bad. I don't. Anyway, so Bray Wyatt like. Downward spirals him, and he wins cl- basically clean as a sheet. I don't know what this means anymore. And I'm not... It was a good match. It was a really good match. I am not upset that Daniel Bryan lost. I just don't know what this means. Same. I, I don't know where we go. Uh, if you're a hardcore Daniel Bryan fan, I would start despairing. <laughs> seems to be... Well, thing is, there seems to be some grand design that they think they have for Wrestlemania, and I have no idea what it is. I wouldn't start thinking that. No, not for him. Oh, not for, definitely for, not for him. I've heard so many predictions on possible main events from Daniel Bryan and John Cena tag teaming to, I mean, no. yeah, it's it's everything, and, and I just, I don't know. They seem to have some idea. I don't know what it is, and it's not guaranteed to be good. Apparently their thoughts are loftier than my comprehension. I don't know, um, but I I would start despairing if you're a Daniel Bryan fan, hoping he gets into the uh, title picture anytime soon, because he is now he's now uh, staring at the lights for Bray Wyatt. I don't again. I don't even mind that so much. Um, just because I'm a fan doesn't mean I necessarily think that he needs to be holding on to the belt forever, because you know he's the bestest in the world. Um, I just like seeing him wrestle, you know. It's just, I thought, I thought it was a well done finish. It was a good match, um, but yeah, it was. It was definitely the match of the show, and it was definitely all downhill from there. I love watching Brock Lesnar do his job. I think they booked Brock Lesnar at least recently, exactly right. I love watching that guy operate. That guy is just a beast, and they book him like a beast, and he fucking destroys everyone he runs into. It's Perfect. I would not have booked Big Show against this man, however. I thought that was a waste of Brock Lesnar. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with The Undertaker. Um, I don't know if they're going for Brock and Undertaker. There's been a lot of rumors. I've even heard Sting and Undertaker. All of these are mistakes. They desperately need to do John Cena and The Undertaker. Because if if they're going to put... If they're going to have... Any shot at making us think there's anyone who has a chance of beating The Undertaker, it's John Cena. Never going to happen. I wouldn't say never. At least not 
not until they get in their head that they're going to turn John Cena heel. And that's the only thing that if they want to turn John Cena heel, that would be the time to do it. Would be would be beating the Undertaker because whoever beats the Undertaker will be a heel forever. That'll do it. You know, um, the two problems being they will never turn John Cena heel. <laughs> so that's, you just said, I mean, I would say, I wouldn't say never, that's the never. Um, yeah, so, but if they want to have any drama of someone beating The Undertaker, John Cena. That said, Undertaker would win. <laughs> yeah. um, but that would be a good time. I, I've always. Again, people. Sh I've heard people shit on this match, but one of my favorite WrestleMania matches of all time was Rock and Austin, where they did the double turn. Austin sold out to Vince McMahon. Um, I thought that was a perfect heel turn, where Austin said, "Like, I need to win this match. This is all I have left. I need to win." And so Austin threw every single thing he had at the Rock, and he could not beat him. And in the end, he had to sell out to McMahon to beat The Rock, because he needed to win. So, um, that's, I actually thought that was going to be what happened with John Cena and The Rock, because John Cena was saying the exact same things. You know, he's like, this is the worst year of my career, I need to beat The Rock. He said that, he's like, I need to win, I, I need this. And so, no, it was just, you know, John Cena wins law, you know, uh, I thought they might actually have John Cena turn heel. Stupid me. But, um, no, that didn't happen. Because that's... But if they're going to have John Cena... If they're going to have Undertaker lose, it should be to John Cena. And it should be the same way. You know, John Cena cannot beat The Undertaker. He throws every single thing he has at this man. You know, Taker won't tap out. He won't tap out. He puts him in the STF. He puts him in Hell's Gate somehow. He put, you know, he tombstones the guy. He fucking FUs the guy. Everything. He won't beat him. And so in the end, you know, the way I'm booking it, you know, he hits him with every single thing he's got. He fucking last rides the Undertaker, and this old fucker will not die. You know, even the last rides the guy, the fucker sits up. You know, so in the end, like, he's like, I can't fucking do it. Um, so, all of a sudden, Taker picks him up for the tombstone, John Cena punches him in the dick. Rolls him up, one, two, three, John Cena wins. John Cena is a heel forever, and it's beautiful. So, like, you have got a story that will endure forever. John Cena has beaten The Undertaker. Undertaker, hey, next, next WrestleMania, you've got him for one more match. You know, you've got a nice little capstone. He gets his revenge on John Cena. You can finally let that fucker retire. You know, eh, it's a nice little capstone. John Cena's eating, but they'll never turn him heel. <laughs> the Rumble. I was just bored by the Rumble. The rum the match itself. Uh, I know there's always favorites to win. and and I think it was pretty obvious. For the most part, it was like that. But... I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about within the match itself. There's a little bit more surprises mm. in in sometimes surprise occupants, and in this one there there were there was Torito, that Kevin was... Nash, and JBL. It was like, yeah. Usually, yeah. People usually tune in to see the surprises. Um, there really weren't that many. Yeah, you pretty much call them. And and even their yeah. surprise Be right back. Go ahead. Even their surprises in, in terms of inside the match were not that surprising. Like you knew that there was going to be a rift in between uh, the shield. And guess what? It started. And there was just no other storylines involved. There was nothing else to get get into. It, it just was a standard battle royal. Yeah, I mean, I it, almost every Rumble you can name some really huge return debut. Like, well, I mean, I hate to bring this up because it, ironically it happened again, but Diesel. You remember when Diesel returned? You're like, holy shit, it's Diesel. This year, Kevin Nash came back and we're like, oh. That's your thing now, is it? No, that's him again. 
you know, we were like, it really wasn't anywhere near the, we are like, oh. And even, <laughs> it's, again, when other people's suggestions are more surprising than yours, like Jake the Snake coming back. That would have been such a dumb move. Still, that's more surprising than, than Kevin Nash. You, I would have not put Jake, leave Jake alone. I don't care how good is like Jake looked pretty good going in the ring, but no matter how good he looks, leave don't let him do anything. I guarantee you that guy is not going over any top rope. He can. I mean, it's no, pretty, don't, you don't know shit about what he can and can't do. If they can put the great Kali over, they can put anyone over. <laughs> they put they the Shield no, no, were so ginger down, down. in how they picked up this brittle man and put him over. They can do anything. <laughs> Calm down. What I'm saying is, I'm, I'm talking about the state of his health. I'm not talking about like his knees or anything like that. I don't know what he's physically capable of. Like, I seriously don't know. But like, he, he I, I just don't know what the state of his, I, I don't know. But I think they should just leave Jake alone. Um, but like, I remember they fucking threw Drew Carey in there. It was bullshit, but, you know, there were tons of surprises going in here. And when your biggest surprise is El Torito, <sighs> you know, um, usually there's some, like, big, big legend that comes back, you know, and he, they get in the ring and it's I was like, even partially thinking, since they brought him back for an old school Raw, is it vicious? Ring. You're gonna bring Kevin Nash. I mean, it... yeah, I don't know. Well, the thing is, like, they actually had some people in there who could. They had Flair. Um, I mean, Flair is not exactly in great condition, but he he could go over the top rope. They could have him go in there and chop some people and strut, and then just kind of get dumped. You know, I'm not advocating Flair taking any like superplexes, but. He's in good enough condition, even at his age. You know, just, woo, ah, you know. You could do that. Um, more than fucking Jake. Um, and he'd get a huge pop, and he'd, whoever dumped him would get booed. Um, fucking Duggan. And I hate Duggan. But he'd get a huge pop, and he'd get out there, too. If you, if you must start throwing people in there, fine. Um, uh, who else? Um, well, the, I mean, those were people that we saw. Those were people that we definitely saw there. Instead, they had JBL, who I'm not sure if he can go or not. Like, but they just had him stand like kind of on the apron and then get immediately tossed. And that didn't seem to bother him. He's like, whatever. And like, it was a comedy spot, but I mean, dude. You had the potential for a WrestleMania title match, and that didn't bother you when you got eliminated. I mean, like, a little bit? You didn't even, like, kind of take that seriously? Like, I know you're an announcer and all that, but you had a shot. You know, like... And I've never seen a crowd so down immediately upon seeing the 30th The 30th person. guy. I, uh, I knew... See, they were all so sure... And I knew that it wasn't going to be... Him. And everyone was so hoping for Daniel Bryan. They weren't hoping. They knew. At, there was a little... Uh, but they, they really wanted him. They really did. They wanted some kind of appearance. and, and They didn't and, want him. They knew. And... and when it was like there was nobody else. They were like, it's 30, it's him. <laughs> with, with the numbers just going down and down, they were just like, they wanted him more and more. And then I've never seen, like... Poor Rey Mysterio. <laughs> what, he, what he's saying is, you know, like the the contestant, the you know, the wrestlers keep coming out and coming out because there's thirty guys in there, and they wanted Daniel Bryan because they're like, he's our guy. They love Daniel Bryan, so like, you know, it's you know twenty eight, twenty seven is Alberto, twenty eight is uh, Batista, twenty nine is I don't even know who the fuck. So there's only one more guy, and they're like. Here it is, it's Daniel Bryan. And he's saying, like, they wanted Daniel Bryan. I'm saying they knew it was him. Because he's the only guy left. 
he's it. There's no one else. Like he's the only main he's the only main eventer left. And they completely forgot. And they <laughs> forgot Rey Mysterio. And I'm like, I'm sitting there going like, why are they chanting for Daniel Bryan? They forgot Ray. And I'm like, because because he was in the video package. <laughs> He comes out and he's like, Booyaka! He's like, 619! <laughs> booyaka, Booyaka! And it, took, it was like five seconds of stunned silence and then, Boo! boo. <laughs> it wasn't just boo, it was like, Fuck you! Poor Rey Mysterio. Oh. And the thing is, it's like, even, even like, neglecting the fact of not putting in Daniel Bryan, usually want the last person to be, like, a big splash. Like, someone that, oh my god, he could take it. Either he's, like, a big heel or a big face. I mean, that's kind of what they did with with uh, their last, you know, The Rock or something like that. It, it's, just, where, it's where I thought they should have put Batista. Uh, yeah, it's where I just, he comes in, yay, dumps people out. Uh, well, I thought, I thought if they were going to bring Batista back... They shouldn't have announced Batista at all. That's another thing. But and then just have him like shock return as thirty. But even even getting over Daniel Bryan not being in it, you expect a big name or someone flashy to make an appearance yeah. to do that. And even then, Rey Mysterio is not that guy. Well, no one in the world expects Rey Mysterio, even without Batista being in the Royal Rumble, to win the Royal Rumble. Well, actually, going back. You remember one of the most shocking, de- de- like shocking Rumble entrants that I remember. That was one of those legends, Mr. Perfect. You remember when Mr. Perfect was like one of the final four, and you didn't really think, but you actually thought that he might, he might, might do it. I forget who the other three was like, but, I, but you actually thought like maybe, like he might. This motherfucker might go to WrestleMania. Like you didn't really think it, but like. He's Final Four, man. Like, I was even wondering, I mean, since they were pushing him so much, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt might be in the Rumble? Yeah. Um, and he, there was some really strange gaps in the Rumble, you know, like, because there were people who were in the Rumble that were in matches, and yet other people weren't. Like, Goldust and Cody Rhodes. They were in the Rumble. But New Age Outlaws, not in the Rumble. Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan, not in the Rumble. Why not? I don't know. And New Age Outlaws, nope. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Los Matadores, not in the Rumble, but are they pissed off that El Torito is? I'd be a lot more buttered about that. <laughs> I'd be kind of torqued. Um, <laughs> you know, how, I, you know, the crowd. My half bull, my half bull. The valet gets the, the Royal Rumble position, but I don't. Yeah, how did my fu- <laughs> how did my fucking midget pet get qualified into the fucking Rumble, and I don't? Like, fuck this company, you know? Like, <laughs> fuck this company, man! Like, why the fuck I work here? Like, I've been busting my ass, and this little fucker with the bullhorns get fuck you! Like, so like. You know, how pissed would I be in this company if, like, I worked here? Or how pissed would I be as an audience member, like, if fucking JBL makes the Rumble and, oh, but there's no room for Daniel Bryan, you know? There's no room for, uh, who else, like, who else would have been nice to see in this Rumble that didn't even qualify, like, Christian? You know? Oh, yeah, people were expecting Christian. You know, Christian. But no, we had to make room for El Torito. You know, yeah. Who else would have been? You know, who else? Um, Fandango made it, but you know, yeah, we didn't have room for him. But I agree, it, it, Batista shouldn't have been announced. It was some big fuck up, at least in my opinion, that they they did it. I just like how they didn't even they didn't even have to make a shocking return on Raw. You know, like maybe a, maybe Del Rio's in the ring going like. It is my destiny to win the Rumble! And then, like, you know, all of a sudden Batista comes out and bombs him. No, it was just like, all of a sudden, like, they're at the commentator's desk and they're like, 
we have big news. Batista's going to be in the Rumble. And I'm like, cool. And everyone knew. Everyone knew he was going to win. I mean, as close as you can get to certainty on a wrestling prediction, people were like, it's going to be Batista. The, the ending of it was really like... <sighs> well, ever since 30 showed up and it was Rey Mysterio, the crowd did uh, shit. They, they were done. As soon as they knew... As soon as they knew Daniel Bryan was out of this, they were just like, fuck it. They, they were, they, so, they were no, so out of this match. You, you basically saw them like in a unison just you know, like, fuck it. It's Batiste who's going to win, and they just... Well, at first they were like... They, there was like... they At first they said, fuck it. And they booed. They, like, fu- they were like, fuck all of you. And then they were like... Well, I guess it's okay if CM Punk wins. And then Kane comes back. And that leads to my second... I know. <laughs> Let me finish. And then they're like... Th- then they were like, oh, fuck all these guys. Well, okay. Uh, well, CM Punk's still in it. He's good. And then Kane comes... Ba- Citizen Kane comes back. And then he comes back from the crowd or wherever the fuck he was. And then grabs Punk by the hair and throws him out and Punk is eliminated. And then they were like... Okay, now, fuck all of you. That's like my, that's my second wrestling pet peeve. They were heading for the exits at that point. <laughs> they no, they really were. They like they were like as soon as Punk got eliminated via bullshit, they were headed for the exits. Having a non wrestler eliminate an entrant in the Royal Rumble that pisses me off because they do it every year. Every year. They never learn their lesson, and every year they do it, and every year it pisses me off when it happens, even when it happens to heels. I'm like, God damn it. There's got to be some fairness in this thing. Am I only one around here giving a shit about the the rules? Seriously, why why wouldn't, you know, when in the times of of the the corporation or or the, the whatever, that... The, the head bad guy just not have a lumberjack match around the Royal Rumble and have people just continually pull motherfuckers out of the match. What I will, <laughs> I will briefly explain what he's talking about. In the Royal Rumble, you must you can only be eliminated by being thrown over the top rope and having both feet hit the floor. What he is complaining about is that at least once a year, the occurrence is... Somebody will throw another man over the top rope to be eliminated. This person will grow very angry and then run back in the ring and illegally throw the person who threw him out of the ring out of the ring, which counts as an elimination of that man as well. This is bullshit. Continue. Just why wouldn't, if you weren't a part of the heel stable, just have... You know, your your cronies as lumberjacks to beat the shit out of people and throw them out of the ring. Yes. Who do you care? It's not against the rules. Yeah. And the commentators always just go like, well, it looks like he's eliminated. There's no disqualifications. And I'm like, that's bullshit. You're like, because, like, so an eliminated guy can just run back in the ring and throw anyone out they want. And the answer is Yes. And I don't know why they're so hung up on that. Because you can eliminate people 50,000 different ways. Yeah. And I don't know why they're not, why they're hung up on that specific way that they have to do it year in, year out. I guess it's like they can't, they haven't figured out a way to stop it. Like, logically, like, how do we prevent this? They can just, like... They could just be easy. A non-entrant can affect the match. They're barred. Or if they do do it, it doesn't count. Or they like they're fired or something. I don't know, but like yeah. this doesn't seem yeah. like this doesn't seem like it's that hard a concept, you know. If you like, interfere, you're fired. Like once you're out, you have to leave, or you're fired, you know. Like I don't know, but yeah, like this happens every year. Where like you know, it's it's almost always a good guy. This happens too. Where like you know, the good guy throws his rival out. The rival gets pissed, runs back in, and dumps him out too. And I'm like. How is that, like, that's bullshit, you know, like, they're like, no DQs, oh well, you know, like, so, like, why don't I just, like, run back in with a shovel and just, like, 
beat him over the head, and they're like, no DQs, fuck you, and like, <laughs> and I'm like, they're, they're correct, there are no DQs, so like, why don't I just like, bring a taser, and I'm like, th this is, this is the, why don't I just bring a shotgun <laughs> argument, you know, like, if we're just gonna play that way, why don't I just bring a shotgun, you know, <laughs> You got you. Yeah, you, <laughs> there's there's no DQs, and then there's just like let's use a little common sense here. Like, the, you, you got to give me something to suspend my disbelief on. Let's be reasonable here. But yeah, that also is one of my greatest pet peeves in the Rumble. But yeah, you know, it it happens every year. But this happened to CM Punk, and yeah, there we go. Um, the finish of this was the the third audience proxy. Like, those who were still not heading for the exits, they were just kind of resting their... Th those who weren't actively, like, shitting in the seat and throwing it at the ring at this point were just kind of like, I guess Roman Reigns winning is okay, but he won't. And he didn't. And he didn't. The finish was weak. And I mean it was weak. It was like... This is how it was. Th this is exactly how it went. Batista speared Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns gets up. Roman's Reigns, Roman Reigns spears Batista. Batista gets up. Roman Reigns tries to Irish whip Batista. Batista reverses and throws out Roman Reigns. That's it. He, he just... All it was was, like, he reversed an Irish whip. Like, it was seriously, like... It it probably wasn't the most, like, anticlimactic, like, Royal Rumble finish ever, but it was... It's up there. Like, it was just... Just, I'm gonna throw you... No, you won't. Out. <laughs> I have seen... I have seen, like, the final two Royal Rumble... Entrance, the the uh, you know the royal the final the final two, I have seen them actually like wrestle a match for like ten minutes. Wasn't it like Angle and somebody else who actually like wrestled for like ten minutes when they were the final two? I forget who it was. It actually it was like Ray, like Ray Mysterio and somebody went for like seriously for a while, and then he won with like a head scissors. I think it was when Ray won. It was an angle, but it was it was Ray and whoever. But they they went for a long time, and then Ray won with that surprise head scissors, pulled him over. Whatever, it was good. You know that was a really really good finish. And in this one, you did it was like reverse Irish whip out, and this was in like thirty seconds, you know, and the crowd was just like, ugh. Like, even for Batista, we expected better. Like, we got... We got nothing out of this guy. We didn't... Like, we got a spine buster out of this guy. And not a very good one. Like, we didn't get any of his big moves. Like, we didn't get, like, the Batista bomb. Like, like maybe we were expecting, like, some kind of... I, I don't know where... We, like, all we got was, like, a reverse Irish whip out of this guy. You know... That's it. Like, oh, that's weak. And then he's like, "We're going to WrestleMania." Oh, I need my, I need my Geritol. Like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll notice, you'll notice in speaking about this Rumble, in which we said we had nothing to speak about, we had nothing to speak about. All we had to talk about was stuff that was much more interesting, you know, about how, about how this made us frustrated about other stuff that happened in the past. <laughs> Basically what I'm saying is, you know, all night they were telling, they were saying what they wanted, you know, all night they were chanting for, they, they were chanting for Daniel Bryan, you know. And I'm not saying, I'm really not saying they needed to, like, put the belt on Daniel Bryan and never take it off. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, they're telling you what they want. 
and they want new blood in the title picture. That is all I'm saying. I'm not saying put the belt on Daniel Bryan. I'm saying put him in title matches. I'm saying they <laughs> fucked up when they had the belt on Daniel Bryan and they took it away. Like, twice. At least twice. I'm saying that, like, they fucked it up when they kept doing that... They basically played keep away with the title belt between him and Randy Orton. You know, you know they just, like... They it, they it was like they trolled the fans. They did. It was like... It's like, oh, you want Daniel Bryan to be the champion? You do you? Well, he won. Okay, he, here he is. He won. You want? Oh no, no, no. Okay. Oh, you wanted to be champion. Okay, buy the next paper. He really won. He, oh, he won. He, okay, you pay. No, no. I'm sorry. No, he didn't. No, no. Okay, now he's now he's one of the whiners. Yeah, have fun with it. No, he's not. We were kidding. You know. Well, now he's gonna be in the Rumble. Third. No, it's Ray. You know, like they. It's fucking ridiculous at this point. Like I don't even know. Like, I would say it's malicious, but it's not. They're just tone deaf. You know? I, I, it's not, like, there's no way. They, they cannot be malicious. That's, why would you do that? They're just stupid. You know? They're just stupid. They don't know. It, but, like, they just, they're telling you what they want. They want new people. They don't want John Cena versus Randy Orton. They don't want Randy Orton versus Batista. We've seen that too. You know? Well, hey, yeah, we really don't want... They don't want Randy Orton versus Daniel Bryan either. Fuck's sake. We've seen that the last five months too. They want Daniel Bryan versus somebody else. You know, we wouldn't mind that. When they're chanting for Daniel Bryan, they want... They want Daniel Bryan. They want Daniel Bryan and someone else. They want new people. Fuck's sake, man. Give them new people. And that doesn't mean you got to fire the old people, too. you just got to get some rotation in here, man. They want Roman Reigns. They want Dean Ambrose. They want Seth Rollins. They want all these new people elevated. They want Big E Langston. I mean, you'll notice when these guys enter the ring, they want they want guys with, uh, you know, was Alexander Rusev. They like the Usos. They like the Matadores. They need to get those fucking masks off them and just let them wrestle for a change. But Jesus Christ, come on. They like Antonio Cesaro. That's all I'm saying, you know. And they're telling you that. And they're telling you they're so fucking bored. They're, they're so fucking bored of this shit. Um, that's it. I'm done. You done? Royal Rumble. <sighs> I walk through miles inside this pit of danger. <laughs> Let's point at the WrestleMania sign. The drinking game begins. <laughs>